Trinity Radio is on. on. The entertainment show that gets you up close and personal with today's hottest stars. Here's your host, Navelle J. Lee. Hey guys, it's Navelle J. Lee and welcome into a new Buzzcast here at Buzzworthy Radio. I had the chance to sit down and speak with Stephanie Shostak. She stars in the USA series Satisfaction. And it's a show about a married couple who are quite possibly going through the worst trials and tribulations of a marriage that you could possibly imagine. Enough so for the wife to turn to a male escort to seek fulfillment. I mean, seriously, if that doesn't make for a good TV show, I don't know what does. But did I also forget to mention the fact that the husband is also aware of the wife's infidelity? But she doesn't know that he knows. Mm-hmm. So we got to talk a little bit about the the relationship between Grace and Neil on the show and what is possibly to come in season two. Plus, find out what it was like to work on the movie The Devil Wears Prada, as well as working alongside award-winning actress Meryl Streep. All that and much, much more with Stephanie Show Stack. Check it out. Hi, Stephanie. How are Hi, you? Michelle. Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for speaking with me. Of course. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's Friday. It's National Donut Day, and I'm speaking with Stephanie Shostak from USA Satisfaction. So if you got your free donut and coffee right now listening to this, please do, because I understand that you are a foodie as much as I am at this point. (laughs) I love food. (laughs) Oh, man. You're like my new best friend now because I can talk to you about food for hours. I love food. Love food. Yeah. So do I. I just had the best ribs in Atlanta two days ago. Ooh, ribs. Ooh. Now now you're tugging at my heartstrings. I I do love a mean steak. I love a mean steak, but I love some baby back ribs too. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. That that should be a separate conversation that we should have. Is nothing but food topics. That that should be our next. That should be our next conversation whenever we chat again. Yeah. Yes. I feel like rare steak. I'm, I'm right along with you. There, <laughs> medium rare. Medium rare. Ah, all right. All right. Me, medium rare. But this, this, this beautiful woman stars in the show Satisfaction on USA, and it was picked up for a second season. And the show centers around uh, uh, Neil and, and Grace, this married couple, and yep. it just seems like on the surface – Everything's okay. They have everything that they could possibly want. There's something missing from that, and it just seems there's just pure and adulterated love and affection there in this relationship. So Grace turns to a male escort. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. Like anyone would, right? (laughs) Just to to fill the need, to fill that need that she feels void of with with her marriage to Neil. So she turns to... Uh, a male escort, Simon, played by Blair Redford, and I, I love him. You know, he he's a he's a great actor. Loved him since his, his young and restless days, and it, it it's complex. It, it com- creates a complicated story for both of these people involved. Uh, my first question is: as of right now, Grace does not know that Neil knows about Simon, right? Exactly. The whole first season, really a big theme, is about hiding the truth. And Neil and Grace are afraid that if they if they come clean, that it will destroy their relationship. And the, the second season is uh, that we're doing now is actually uh, everything comes out very early on, and the truth is a liberator for all the characters, and Grace mm-hmm. is... Uh, really um, finding who she is and and freedom with truth. Mm. But yeah, in the first season that's that's done and you can watch on demand, there's a a lot of hiding and lying. As a marriage... To protect each other, not to deceive each other, which I thought was a very interesting, you know, concept. Do you, in, in your mind, as Stephanie, do you think that Grace really loves her husband or do you think that she is just finding an excuse to 
think that she does love him and she really is just like i don't know what i want in this marriage i don't know if i still love you i don't know if you know it, it's I just think there is no doubt in her mind that she loves her husband um even even with anger and with disappointment and feeling betrayed mm-hmm. she can't help to love them because of, of of who they were, uh, you know, they they had this really strong love from the beginning, and I think that never goes for the way. But it doesn't feel like what the marriage should be like, and mm-hmm. the desire maybe it started with desire not being there and not feeling like he paid attention to her or listened to her, and that they were growing apart. Which I love, you know, that was. A, something I loved in the pilot. I think that's a, something a lot of people can relate. How do you stay connected and, yeah. and together after all these years? Yeah. As a married woman yourself, and when you were doing the first season of the show, did it bring up a lot of questions to your mind too, uh, as far as married life was concerned? Like, oh my God, what the hell is she doing? <laughs> like, did, did it... Yeah, I just knew what she was doing was not something I was going to do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm a very honest person. So, you know, thank God we have good communication skills in my my marriage. So, um, yeah, no, it didn't... I was, I was uh, able to separate my life from her life, that's for sure. That's good. And you actually were raised in Paris... You're raised in Paris. And suburbs of Paris. Suburbs yeah. of Paris. And you came to you I heard you traveled a lot here in the States when you were younger before you officially made the move here to the States. Yes. My dad's American. So we was super lucky. Every summer, you know, we my parents saved saved for one big vacation that we took in the summer. The French have a lot of summer vacation and and we would you know, tour the the states. My dad's from Iowa, so we'd go there a little bit, and hmm. then Michigan, and then hit all, all all different states every year. So, I uh, I know the United States quite well. Different states. Um, you are very fortunate because I don't think I've been any further than Los Angeles. So, <laughs> I, I, I yes, very fortunate. That's yeah, I do feel that. I I wish I had the culture of what you've seen because trust me, I would love to visit a lot more than what I have. So, yeah, definitely, you're very fortunate in that regard. And what I mean, what possible uh, scene or area that you've been in that resonates in your mind that you know this was the best thing that you would possibly have seen in your life in your travels when you were over here. And he, well, I remember <clears throat> Yellowstone and the Grand Canyon, um, which were just, you know, the, the, the views were amazing. And my favorite, though, as a kid was um, I used to go to a ranch, a <laughs> food ranch in Michigan, and that was the thing I looked most forward to, and going horseback riding and feeling free. <laughs> mm. Okay. Simple things, simple things. That's all you got to look for. Simple, it's simple things. things. That's it's all it. about the simple things in life. Yes, and especially when you're a kid, you know, you're not. It's not about architecture or. But I mean, I still. Oh no. I really love the canyon and Yellowstone. That was, just, and, I, and I used to tell my best friend, I I love the my summer vacation so much. I was quite obnoxious and used to tell you know, and then when it rains, it the rain doesn't wet you. <laughs> What is I, I read about that quote and, and exactly I don't you know I was kind of looking at it, I was like I hmm what does she mean by that but I, guess, well, I, I, I got think, it I, I kind of got think it I was lying I think I think I was in a summer light summer shower as a kid and so I was like wow this is not a big rain at all and so then I just made up this this truth <laughs> I kind of felt like you know when you said that it it sort of meant like the rain doesn't stop you. Yeah, the rain lets you, and it kind of prevents you from doing something else, but the rain doesn't stop you from going ahead and going into the next venture of your destinations. And just you just keep on going, and you just keep on doing. And so that's kind of what I took from it. But 
I'm probably reading way that's more so into. Good. I'm probably reading, reading way more into the quote than what I needed to, but that's what I took from it. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good uh, interpretation, uh, but probably yeah, beyond my eight-year-old self when I said. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So you're wise beyond your years. Let's just put it that way. You always just tell them that. Tell your kids that. You, you were wise beyond your years when you were eight years old, just just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> when you came to the States, uh, you, you went to the College of uh, William & Mary in, uh, in Virginia. And after graduating, you got a job at Chanel. Yes. How in the world did you feel about that, being a part of that company? Because that, that's huge. Oh, that was amazing. I, it was great. You know, Chanel in New York City, right? it was uh, the best of both worlds. The chic, Parisian chic and, and the, the capital, the cultural capital of the state. So, mm. yeah, it was fantastic and a lot of fun for a young girl in her first job. But I did feel all of a sudden that, you know, oh, this is not this is not going to fulfill me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I sort of knew that after a couple of years, and and that's why I, I left and ended up taking theater classes and, and, and realized that's what I want to do. I was going to say, how are you able to make the shift from leaving that into going into the acting field? So I, I'm sure that wasn't a very difficult, wasn't a very easy decision, but also it wasn't a difficult one for you too, because as you just said, this wasn't going to fulfill you. You were looking for something else. Yeah, it was. It was really luck, a lot of luck, and you know, at Chanel, I, the advertising director asked me to help them to do a, a photo shoot and to participate and the um, photographers asked me so which agency are you with he thought I was a model and oh wow that sort of stayed in my <laughs> yeah I did sort of stayed in my head I was like maybe I could make I could model maybe and make as much money as I'm making now and figure out what I really want to do and I said I told my um, my husband's cousin who was older than us and kind of a mentor for us I told mm -hmm. him about the idea and he goes yeah maybe you should and you could work part time in our office and so I did I did just that you know he offered me a job that working part time and then I modeled started modeling and making a little money and and my husband was uh, you know said yeah go for it so there's a lot of people who helped me and, and helped this um, this choice and this sort of risk be possible. I have to tell you, I see a lot of people online all the time, especially Twitter, especially on my Twitter feed, if not on my Facebook, that people still talk about the devil wears Prada. Like, I hear nothing but everybody who watches it, I just hear nothing but I have to watch this movie again and again and again. <laughs> Yeah, it's really a phenomenon, right? Because people love that movie. I like it. I I just I just found it hysterical because I was just like I didn't realize that there were this many people that still talked about it, and I just love the cast that was in this film. Just so you are aware, and just hearing people talk about it, I was like, wow, there are a lot of people that still talk about this movie. So, what are your thoughts about the fact that people still? mention this years later but also what was it like being in this film um i love that people i mean it's always so much fun when you are part of a movie that people see and love you know it's uh, mm -hmm. it's great and that people approach you and and say oh well, you were in this movie it's a good feeling so um and then being in it was unbelievable for me it was my first ever studio movie, a role in a studio movie and it was with Meryl Streep so you know I, I, I couldn't have asked for more. I actually wished it before it happened. I remember watching <laughs> the HBO series Unscripted with my husband. Yes yeah yeah. With Brian Greenberg, the actor Brian Greenberg is seen getting his first role in a movie with Meryl Streep and Uma Thurman and I remember turning to my husband and being like, wow, could you imagine if my first studio movie could be with Meryl Streep? And then it happened. So, yeah, I, 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 could, 
I could awesome. imagine you walking onto set and you just basically fangirled when you see Meryl Streep like standing right in front of you. 